All right, we're gonna we're gonna get started. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming on a Monday morning. Um, it's great for me to be here because I'd be up in New Jersey. They have another storm, and now all these businesses are closed. And I'm down here with you, so that's awesome. Um, we have a mix, just to, to set the stage, we have a mix of Millennium, Mevo, and non-Millennium clients, but uh, the way we set up, speak up, is that you're gonna get a lot of what, and then you're gonna get a lot of how. So what's really great is, I'm gonna talk to you about some concepts, I'll talk a bit about how, um, I'll touch on certain things in Millennium, but what, whether you're using Millennium or not, the concepts purposely are uh, valid, even if you're using a different software. Um, and I think it's a great time at the beginning of the year to to consider yourselves or encourage yourselves to think differently. Um, whether you're a small salon or not, uh, you're allowed to think big, right? And with the tools that are available anymore, I think it's really great that you can actually look big even if you're not. So if you're big, there's some tools that you're probably not using that I would encourage you to, to consider using in 2015. If you're medium small, think big. The tools are gonna allow you to do the same stuff that the, the biggest salons and spas out there are doing. So. Um, that's really what this is about. Now, you'll also see that we gave you um, the Speak Up Action Plan. Um, for anybody that's been to our experience that we do for Millennium, um, one of the things I really encourage is I really don't want people to come to something like this, get that temporary motivation, and then you go to the salon tomorrow and all hell breaks loose and you forget about all of it and none of it happens. You know? You've invested your time, uh, you're here today. I want to make sure that you actually uh, get some really actionable concepts uh, we've got all these little uh, areas throughout the uh, booklet you were given to take notes, and I encourage you to take notes. And really try to take at least one or two of these concepts and implement them in your salon over the next, you know, coming weeks. So that's my goal. Um, but because just to be here to entertain you, I'm not that funny. I can be funny. I was telling them I can be funny. And even trying to tell them how funny I was wasn't funny. So I'm hoping that uh, we actually have a good time here. I want to encourage you. Um, Towards the end of the segments, I'll give you an opportunity to ask a couple questions. Um, so the, the format is basically I'm going to go over four concepts, four strategies uh, that can help you grow this year. Uh, we'll take a short break, let you grab another coffee, bathroom break. And then Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com is going to come up and really give you the nuts and bolts of what he does within his salon on any given week and given day. So um, uh, along the lines of uh, several of these concepts. So what's great is you're hearing me, the software guy, but I've been doing this for 27 years. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces here, so a lot of you know who I am and my passion for this industry. But then you get somebody that's doing it coming up and really kind of digging a little deeper. So, and then at the very end, we encourage you in the back, we've set up a few stations for you guys to actually go back. We have tech support people here. Ask the questions that you have if you're a Millennium client. If you're a Millennium client interested in Mevo, what's this Mevo all about? We've got Mevo set up there, you can check it out. And if you're not using Millennium or Mevo, um, we encourage you to check it out or talk to um, the big guy in the back, Big John, I'm Little John, that's Big John. <laughs> um, and he can answer any questions for you if you're not a Millennium client. So we actually have two um, people, or two guests in the class that I've never had before. One is a little lizard here on the ground right here, um, which I was going to tease Jen and actually say, can you pick up this pen and I want to hear her scream, but then you guys all came and she wasn't here and ruined that joke too. But, and we have a little baby in the back, which is amazing. I love that. That's so cool. Um, welcome. And I think that's, a, that's awesome. Um, all right, so let's, let's uh, get going on it. So I told you we're going to talk about four strategies, and these are actionable strategies that you guys can do things with. Now, anybody that listens to me, at conferences or classes. I never do a class where I don't talk about these first things. So anybody that's heard me before can probably guess what this is going to be. Um, and it's the growth indicators. Um, so many salons spend so much time just focusing on revenue. And the way I describe revenue, obviously revenue is important, right? That's what's feeding your employees, feeding you. Um, so revenue is important, but it's not the, it's the result. Right? It's the result of doing things right is how, uh, whether I provide great services, I've got a great environment, I'm doing the right things business-wise to grow my business. Yeah, revenue matters. I track revenue in my company. Trust me, it all matters. But what I, my first section is going to be about what we call the growth indicators. Because what I like about the growth indicators is they're forward focus. Revenue's not. Revenue is, I talk about it as, with an analogy of like you're driving a car. 
You wouldn't drive your car down the road looking in the rear view mirror, right? Rear view mirror is to me revenue. It's what you did yesterday, how much money you're making today. But what can I do today or what can I analyze today that's going to make sure Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday are successful? That's important. Revenue is not going to tell you that. Right? Even if you look at last year's revenue, you get an idea of what you did last year, but it's still going to come down to how well you're doing certain things. And it's around these things that we call growth indicators. So, so first strategy is really focusing on growth. So growth indicators, uh, they're future-focused metrics to help you grow sales. All right? And again, anybody that hears me do these classes knows my passion for the front desk. Uh, because when you think about what I do for the industry for 27 years or what my company does, we provide tools to help that front desk and your business grow. That's what we do. I mean, when, if you go back 25 years ago and look at our mission and vision, it wasn't about technology. It was about making sure that we educate the industry and help them grow. Because if I do that, you're going to want whatever I've got, right? So to me, it's win-win. And it was about 1997 where I actually had finished putting in a lot of the features into um, Salon Solutions at the time that became Millennium. And we had an amazing appointment book. It automatically find, found openings. We had the first online booking ever in the industry. So we'd done all these things. But even though I'm a technology guy, technology doesn't turn me on. What turns me on is business tools and help people grow. So when I, in 1997, found out about these things called growth indicators, I got really excited. And we were one of the first software companies that actually built our tools around it. So let's just go over what those are. Uh, they're pretty simple. But you, you know what's great is the growth indicators apply to salons, though they apply to an oil change company. They apply to any type of service business where you have repeat guests. So the first one <coughs> that you want to track, <coughs> sorry, I will tell you I'm coming off of seven weeks of bronchitis. So once in a while, the throw to go, I got some water. Um, so far, so good. <coughs> uh, so the first thing is you want to track new clients per month. And new clients per month is going to help you measure how well your advertising is working, how well word of mouth is working, client referrals. Um, so you want to know, on average, how many new clients are coming into your salon each month. Now, I'll show you at the, after I go through each growth indicator where in Millennium you would find this. You can find this in several different places, but I'll show you the best place to go, kind of one-stop shopping for all these growth indicators. Um, but the other thing is, again, for the people not using Millennium, I think our competitors have done a good job of analyzing Millennium, and you probably have it in your software too. So new clients per month. I couldn't tell you where to find it, though. But uh, new clients per month. So we want to measure. You want to watch. Are we trending down? Um, are we trending up? Uh, Bob McConey, who works for me for 17 years now, owns a, has owned a couple salons, sold one. He's down to one salon, just focused in on that. And he actually, over the last couple of weeks, accumulated a lot of vacation time. And I'm like, Bob, you got to take this time. So he's like, you know what? I'm, you're right. I'm going to go take a couple of weeks and spend it at my salon. So he went to his salon and because uh, his wife is kind of uh, behind the chair um, and he has a front desk manager, but he hadn't been there really focused on his salon for probably six months or m maybe even longer. And so he went in there and he just starts calling my phone off the hook because he's running the reports and seeing the stuff that's really making him frustrated. And his, for instance, new clients per month went from, I'm making these numbers up because I don't remember the exact number, I just know the trend. And the trend was say 200 new clients a month, 160, 140, 110, 80, 60, and he's like, oh my God. Then the next thing is, when he was analyzing that, and he, so that's the problem, right? What's the solution? And that's really for you guys to determine based on, did we stop advertising? Um, you know, did we, you know, have we reduced our staff? Um, are our staff, are we encouraging and tracking our employee referrals? Are our own employees referring our salon and bringing in new guests? So there's a lot of different things you can do to actually analyze that. And then I would, I would really encourage and track, and we're going to get into that a little bit later with um, some client loyalty stuff, but in ways to, um, and goals for employees. But one of the things you should be tracking on an employee are how often are these employees referring guests into the salon, either to themselves or somebody else. And, and our software is going to allow you to track that. But you need to know what your new clients per month are. Then the next thing you need to know are, of those new clients, how many of those are we retaining? 
Now that is usually an eye opener. So the industry for as long as I had known, at least the first 15 years of myself being in the industry, all the statistics published about new client retention had to do with just one repeat visit. So on your notes, um, if you look at the, the packet we gave you, it says, okay, there's kind of two different columns. It's like, okay, what's the industry average and what's a goal? The industry average for new client retention uh, is about 35%. A goal is 50%. And again, these are generic. If you're in a mall, if you're in a certain, you know, if you're in a hotel, you're not going to have that type of retention. But if you're at the typical salon or spa, uh, the 35% is an industry average and a 50% is a goal. So over, your goal is half the people that come in that are new, we're going to do our best to retain them. Well, I, had, I was at a, a chain salon show and one of the people that used Millennium came up to me and said, you know, I understand what you're saying about the, the industry average, and, and even when I run my retention reports, I'm at like 48%. But when I look at the number of new clients, or the, the, my client base over the last five years that I've used your product, he goes, it, if it grew 48% with the new clients that were coming in um, every year, I would have twice the clients I have. So something's not right. So I was talking to him a little bit more and we, we had some dialogue going back and forth and I started to realize that he was right. The, the industry was only measuring that second visit. So I went back and definitely the last few years I haven't been coding as much anymore. We built uh, the team out and now I'm actually directing the developers more than I'm coding and I miss it. But when I coded I could actually go, okay, that's a great idea. And I went back to the room. It was a Sunday night. It was a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday event. Um, by Tuesday morning, I pulled him over and said, you know what, uh, let me show you what the problem is. And so I'd written a report, and it was the first report in the industry that tracks new client retention through six visits. So at two visits, uh, you know, and we've done this on hundreds, if not over a thousand salons that we've personally that I've looked at just to see, okay, where is this at? Um, it's pretty much clockwork, and you with Millennium can go back and actually check this out. Um, by the second, so the second visit, roughly 35 to 40-ish percent. You go to the third visit, that drops to about 22 to 25 percent. Uh, when you get to the fourth, fifth, sixth, when you get to the sixth visit, it's 10 to 12 percent. And now it starts to make sense. Now if you look at 100 new clients coming in, within probably three to six months, that 100 is down to probably 20 and by the end of the year, that 20 is 12. So that's the reason why when you look at all this hard work that you're doing and the money that you're spending on advertising and you see these new clients coming in, but at the end of the year, if you started with 2,000 clients, you don't have 4,000, right? You don't have 3,000, you might have 1,900 depending on repeat client retention, which is what we're gonna look at next. So how well are we keeping, how well are we doing at bringing in a quantity of new clients and retaining those clients to make up for what? The repeat clients to either move, unfortunately die, or just stop coming to you, right? So you always want to keep that equilibrium or have those new clients and that retention of the, those new clients outpacing the people that you're losing. And again, in Millennium, that's the MA200 report, and we're going to glance at that in a minute. But um, it's really super important. If you ask me, John, what's one report and I'll just tell you what I do. When I go into a salon, I, first thing I do, if I went into your salon, I'd run the ME200 report. And I could tell you stuff about your departments, about individuals, and you'd be like, oh my God, he's got a camera in here because he's exactly right. He's right, that's the top stylist, but a retention is terrible. Or that's the top stylist, but the frequency of visits awful. Or that's you know, a medium person, but guess what? They're, they're medium, they're, they're not the highest dollar, but the retention rate is great. They're getting people in at a higher frequency than that top person, and that's why their revenue is roughly the same with fewer clients as that top stylist. So uh, understanding this stuff is really important. So, and that's also why I, when I go into a salon and I consult, I say one of the last things I do with the salon are two things. One is raise prices, right? There's so many other things you can do before you raise prices, and definitely things that most likely you already know are wrong, that you could fist on, fix on costs, and um, improvements you could make to your business before you would raise a price on a client. That's the easy kind of way out. I'm not saying to never raise prices, 100% you need to at certain points, but it's usually one of the last things uh, that you do 
when you're trying to fix revenue or profitability. The second thing that I tell people is the last thing you do is increase marketing expenses because I'm able to show people why are you going to dump another $500 a month into marketing when you're keeping 12 out of the 100 people that come in. So let's fix some of these other things. They're going to help increase your revenue and profitability without spending money. So that's what I would encourage you to do this year too, is just to analyze these things I'm talking about before you worry about that next big marketing campaign that you're going to do. Now with social and everything else going on, there's so many things you can do that are low cost. So I'm not discouraging social and marketing and things like that. I'm saying do not go in and start spending big money on marketing until you know what your new clients per month is and what your new client retention is. And fix the problems uh, before you move on. Now what what would cause, you're smarter than me. See, I learned from you for 27 years. So what would cause in your mind, what would be a reason for um, low new client retention? Yes. We have a salon uh, in Miami. We have a very wealthy area. And a lot of people still go. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're kicking out. Mm -hmm. Yep, so in Millennium, so his question is, you know, he is high, you know, the snowbirds come down and then they leave. Um, also, a, a salon that's in a mall might have high, uh, 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 forget what we call it in, in Millennium, um, but people that just passing through, right? Transient, thank you. So uh, in Millennium, under appointment types, that's where you can actually tell it does not count towards client retention. So you're going to create a snowboard, snowbird, snowboard, See, I'm funny. Snowbird uh, uh, appointment type, and you're going to turn off counts towards retention. Now, there's also defaulted into Millennium, a transient appointment type that you turn off counts towards retention. I would also do it on wedding party, right? You know, event, event client, right? So that if you have an event, you're encouraging these people to come to the event, but you know that, you know, they're, you know it's an event. Um, you hopefully keep some of them as clients, but that one visit, you don't want to count towards your client retention number. So it's important that your software actually allow you to determine that. So again, so many years in the industry and trying to make these numbers meaningful, that's one of the first things that I did is add the ability to, to really say, okay, when I booked that appointment, just put it under Snowbird or put it under Transient so that it knows not to count that person and show lower retention. Because you want to focus in on the people that you can really make a difference on, not somebody that's back up in New Jersey, that you're not going to um, be able to um, um, get to come back. Now, the other thing nice about that is in the client selection screen, you can actually um, select certain types of appointment types when you're doing marketing and not market to that snowbird, snowbird and waste your money. Like you're doing a special next week and it's, and it's uh, uh, June, they're not down here. So, so, um, so what, where I was going with the, the new client retention is that I think the other thing that you need to analyze, so I'm not a stylist. I've done this for a long time. I really can look you in the eye and say, I understand you. I understand the industry. I understand your front desk. I understand stylists. Um, I always joke around and I'm schizophrenic. I'm a drummer, but I'm a programmer. So I'm right brain, left brain, and you guys are right brain, so it all works out. Uh, I don't think if I was a programmer, a typical programmer, this industry would have driven the typical programmer crazy. I love it. So, so from that perspective, understand, I do understand your business. But what I've seen with new client retention is that a lot of times we're not feeding those new clients to the right people, right? What's your first, your first intent, right? Oh, let's give them to the best stylist. Well, guess what? The best stylist is so busy that after the second visit, that person disappears because they can't get in, on, get, get in on a Saturday. They can't get in on a Friday night. Or what do we do? We have a new stylist, fresh out of school, so we just start pumping all the new clients to them, and maybe they're really not where they need to be yet, or they still need some training, or, and that's not, that's not necessarily true. There's some, we're in Paul Mitchell School, uh, Miami, and I wanna just thank Hector and the team here for allowing us to have our event here. Um, I, all the Paul Mitchell schools and a lot of other schools in the United States use Millennium. Um, and when I go see future professionals or we bring the future professionals into our uh, experience, they actually get to do a hair show for us and all kinds of stuff, I'm blown away. So by no means am I saying every new 
future professional that comes in, you shouldn't give new clients to because there's some amazing uh, artists out there. But there are some where you know, maybe we're um, giving them new clients and we're not realizing there's a problem. And if you analyze by individual that new client retention, you'll identify possibly a problem. Maybe you could have three new future professionals and just one of them, man, their retention rate's like 10%. Well, there's a problem. I can't fix it. You guys can. I'm sure you can figure it out. But you want to be able to watch those things because you're pumping clients in that are not coming back after that second or third visit. Um, that report, by the way, if you want to write it down um, by the new client retention area, it's called New Clients by uh, Visit. So it's under analytical reports in Millennium. So it's an analytical report called New Client Retention by Visit. And that's the one that'll show you through six visits. Now, I encourage you to do all of last year. So um, you do it from like January through December. And it's gonna show you, actually even better would be if you did like, if you have enough data, I would go to the middle of 2013, all the way to present. Um, and it's gonna really give you, it's gonna give all those people from 2013 plenty of time to come back six times and you're gonna get some really relevant data. Um, now why did I do six visits? Because the average salon um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but the average salon uh, only gets about five visits a year on, on a client. Now you've got nail clients that might come in 18 times, you've got color clients that might come in four times, and you're, but your hair client is in that six range, right, every two months. You know, we'd love it every month, and for men it should be at least every month, uh, but uh, that's why we went out six visits, um, so that you could kind of look at a year and say, did those people come back six times? And you'll see the graph, and you'll Smile when you look at yours because it's going to probably be uh, in the 8 to 15% at the high end range of new client retention. And then you start analyzing monthly the other retention reports under analytical reports. There's a retention summary that does it by employee. So you can start to identify, okay, John's retention is really great, but Jen's is medium and Susie's is awful. So let's figure out why. And let's stop giving clients to her until we figure out why. Okay? So that's important. You work hard and spend a lot of money usually to bring those clients in. And a lot of times we're giving them to the wrong people. Either the super busy person that can't retain them because they're too busy or their prices are too high. Or the new person that just isn't quite ready for that onslaught of new clients. And um, we're not keeping up with whether or not they're keeping them or not. Yes? So you're saying the average keeping fee of visit for uh, the Five, 4.88 to be exact. So I'm gonna to get to that in a second. So I jumped ahead of myself. So repeat client retention, let's hit on that, and then the next one's frequency of visit. So repeat client retention. So we, we analyze how many new clients we're bringing in a month. Then we analyze how many new clients we're keeping. Then we analyze how well are we doing at keeping the people that already love us and are loyal to us and have been here at least X number of visits coming back. The repeat client retention industry average is around 70%. And the goal, is 85%. And the 15% attrition you allow, and uh, I've heard people say this, and I just kind of find it funny, is you allow people to move or die, but otherwise you want them to come back, right? Those are the two excuses, that's why you get that 15%. But 85% of your repeat clients, that are, and again, a repeat client, uh, to his point, would not be a snowboard, it would be a snow, snowbird, it would be somebody that, you know, consistently comes to your salon um, every, at least once every 90 days. So um, repeat client retention is another thing you want to analyze because what I basically told you and I'm going to uh, show you in the MA200 report is you want to keep a balance. You want to be retaining more new clients than the repeat guests you're losing because it's real simple. If you don't, you're, it's going to be real hard for your sales to rise because you're losing clients, it's going to decline. So you want to be able to track that. And the next thing I want to touch on is my favorite growth indicator. This is the one where I can go into the typical salon anywhere in the United States and look like a hero because frequency of visit is the number one growth indicator you should focus on the most. The reason I say that, and I really encouraged it in 2008, 2009, 2010, when, that, when the recession took a dive, I started pumping out stuff to our clients saying, listen, the least important thing right now are new clients and new client retention because at that time when, when the economy uh, took a dive, if you even think about yourself, nobody was looking to switch salons at that point, or everybody was kind of frozen, right? You just kind of kept doing what you were used to, or back, you know, if you used to go to a salon every month, you went every six weeks or eight, eight weeks, depending on if there was a you know, financial reason or a concern that you had. 
But at that point, clients weren't bopping around as much as they are now. It's when things are good, people kind of go here, they'll try that, there's a promotion over there. But when things get bad, they kind of buckle down. And what I was explaining to salons is, right now is not the time to try to bring on new clients when the, re when the economy was down. Your number one thing is to take the clients that already love you and come to you and get them to come in more often. And the salons that did it were feed pumping us back with um, feedback, just thanking us, saying, oh my God, the, we, we've actually grown 15% even though we lost clients. So how do you do that is pre-book. So, you know, I want to explain because, you know, if I went around the room and said, how, <clears throat> how many of you pre-book, a lot of you would probably say you do. But when you walk into a salon that has a culture of pre-book and does it right, it's a whole different game. It's a whole different game. And we all do it. We all go to the dentist and we'll pre-book that six-month-out appointment. But then we think that our guests aren't willing to pre-book for next month. They are as long as from the day, from the, and I like to encourage from the moment that new client comes in, that's where you want to start that whole mentality of this is what we do. And it doesn't start at the front desk, it ends at the front desk. It starts with the reception, uh, the, I don't even like reception, it's the front desk professional when they're first booking that appointment. And then w when the service provider is taking care of that guest, before they finish their hair, they're already talking about, well, so, you know, talking about the style, talking about how great it looks. Um, and saying, okay, so I'm gonna need to see you in five or six weeks, so I'm gonna walk you to the front. I always use Susie, Jen always makes fun of me. She's like, who's Susie? I go, I don't know, Susie's the first name that always comes to my head. So Susie, the front desk professional, um, so the stylist would say, you know, I'm gonna bring you to the front, and Susie's gonna book your appointment um, in five weeks. So which, you know, if it's today, uh, are Mondays really good for you, uh, or is there a better day? And so the question isn't, do you want to book your next appointment? The question is, what day and time works the best for you? And you don't let Susie have that conversation. You let the person that just touched them, styled them, made them happy, have that conversation with them. That is a night and day difference. You're going to go from 25% pre-book to their salons doing 75%, 60 to 75% consistent day over day pre-book using that methodology. The other actually solidifies even more. If you use Millennium and you print your work tickets, um, you actually, the styles will actually engage in that conversation and write the recommendation right on the, the work ticket so that the guest is actually seeing, okay, I'm, I'm telling her to see you the week of, you know, February 16th. And then they walk them to the front and Susie, here, here you go and thank you. And, and now it's a professional recommendation, not Susie just saying, oh, would you like to book another appointment? No, I'll call you back when I look at my schedule. That's what you're going to, that's why you get 10%, 25% pre book When a salon goes, from that 10% range and gets it above 50%, the growth is crazy. It's 15 to 25% because it's real simple. If I just told you the industry average is five visits a year, it's actually 4.88, but let's just call it five. The industry average is five. The goal should be at least six and a half to seven. And the good news is when Bob uh, was looking at his salon, he got back to me and he said, well, this is the bad news. The good news is, because our client base has shrunk so much, the book has opened up and my frequency of visit has gone up. So he's gone up from the five range to the seven range. So they're doing something, they're pre-booking more. So they're realizing, wow, we're, you know, there's not as many phone calls coming in, there's not as many clients coming in, there's something they need to fix. But what they did is start pre-booking and they were able, they're actually their revenue has only dropped slightly because the frequency of visit went up. Now if you think about Let's just say four visits to make the math easy and not keep me uh, doing math while you look at me. Four times is really easy. So if I get one more visit, right, one out of four is 25%. So if I get one more visit, I just grew as a stylist, my business, 25%. It's real simple to explain to them. One visit is 25%. If I got two visits, I just went 50% higher. And most likely my productivity has just gone above 85 to 90%. Okay? Now, the thing is, there is an equilibrium here, and, and you've got to keep an eye on things, because what happens when you keep increasing that frequency of visit? At some point, it could affect retention, right? Um, there, it gets to a point where now the, you've got people coming in at such a high frequency that I can't get in on a Saturday, and now all of a sudden, now I start to um, go to somebody else. So there is a whole science of watching productivity as well. If I see that somebody's productive three months, 90 days straight, averaging over 90% productivity, I guarantee you 
I've, and I've done this and blown people's minds. I said, oh, really, 90% for, and their salon owner's happy, right? He's 92% productive for like six months straight. I go, really? One of the lowest frequencies of visit. Huh? We run the MA200, frequency of visit, 3.8, right? So, um, so what happens is uh, you have to watch it because if productivity goes over 85, 90%, those are the times where now you've got a good problem. You've got somebody that everybody wants to go to, the frequency of visits, great, but at some point that frequency of visits is going to go from 7 to 6 to 5.5 because now people, because he's doing everything right and he's filling up his book, now I can't get in in four weeks, i got to wait five, right? She can't come in in six weeks, she's got to wait seven or eight. And so you keep an eye on it. Now what do you do? That's your indicator to go ahead and raise prices or elevate that person from a stylist to a senior stylist or make that change because you almost purposely move some of the clients over to other stylists. The goal is not that they leave the salon. The goal is that they stay with stylists. They're at the $50 price range and now you're moving her to the $65 price range and you purposely do that adjustment uh, at that time. So when people ask me, when do I raise prices? It's more of an individual thing for me. And when somebody is productive, 89, 90, 92%, um, 90 to 120 days straight, those, that's where you can consider it. Before then, there's so many other things that you can fix. Like I said, raising prices, I'll help you grow your business 15 to 25% and never touch prices, most of you, because there's so many of these low-hanging fruit things that I'm talking about you can pluck off the tree before you start raising prices. But once productivity is that high on an individual, the only way for them to make more money or the salon to make more money <clears throat> is to raise the price. So that's an indicator. Frequency of visit, productivity are indicators of when you can mathematically or even subjectively, uh, I'm sorry, objectively, make a decision of when it makes sense to allow somebody to, to raise their prices, okay? It's pre-booking is just, that's the first thing I start with at a salon. I'll go in and look at their pre-book percentage because like I said, it's easy to look like a hero because you come in and they're at 12%. You t talk to them about creating that culture, that handoff from the stylist and everything else. They do it within 90 days, they're calling you going, oh my God, it's that easy. Now what, what, what's interesting, and I'm gonna show you in a minute in a program called What If, is when you get people to come in more often, not only does your service revenue go up, your retail revenue goes up because you have that many more opportunities. You have two more opportunities per guest to get them to buy retail. Maybe they only buy retail every three times, right? So now what happens is when that frequency goes up, so do your retail um, dollars, even if you're just doing the same thing because they have more opportunity to purchase retail. Average ticket. So again, what, am, what are we going over? We're going over these forward-focused things that are gonna tell me how next month's gonna look, not revenue that tells me how last month looked. So we looked at new clients per month, new client retention, repeat client retention, frequency of visit. Now the last one is average ticket. People will look at all these big things they need to do. It really comes down to $5, $7, $8 per guest. What's that conditioning treatment that we could add on? How often are we cross-selling our services? So they come in at 8.30 and they look and they go, okay, I'm going to start looking at the other guests that are coming in and see if they've ever gotten a manicure before. And maybe I want people that have gotten a manicure before to let them know, hey, would you like to come in a little early or stay after and we'll give you 20% off your manicure. And now we're taking that spot and filling it with service rather than, you know, it's like fruit, right? Once it spoils, it's done. Once that time frame goes by, I'd rather get, take 20% off and get that nail appointment in than get zero. So there's so many things that that front desk could do. I do a whole class on just front desk professional, getting that front desk to think differently. And they don't just answer the phones and ring up sales. That's like the byproduct of what they do. The real stuff they do is fill up that book, fill up that book, pre-book, you know, and help that way. So average ticket really is a measure of how well we're selling retail, how, how well we're upselling services, cross-selling services, and again, just finding People think that you have to do the big thing. You don't. Find that five to eight dollars per guest that you could really encourage. Again, is it a conditioning treatment? Is it a scalp massage? Is it, I don't know, you guys are better at this than me, like I said. But there are plenty of things you can do. And actually, uh, I will give, uh, we do a lot with Paul Mitchell. We do a lot with a lot of the manufacturers, but we're here at the Paul Mitchell School. And I'll tell you that I think they've done what they call the wash house amazingly, where they actually have these up 
sell services and things you can do while the person is getting the head shampooed. I mean, for me, one of the favorite things for me is being able to lay back on that bowl and get your head massaged. Maybe they put, they squeeze orange juice or whatever they end up doing on it or, you know, whatever, just put on the music and make me happy and, you know, uh, massage my head for five minutes. I'll pay five bucks for that. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to just increase that average ticket, but it's in $5, $8 per guest range. Um, and having dialogue, the next thing that we're going to talk about after this stuff is um, goal setting for yourselves and employees. So having the right dialogue with them is so important, right? If you just start saying, I need you to go from $85,000 to $120,000, that's overwhelming. You know, that's your goal this year. That's overwhelming. What we're showing you here are ways that you can give them very specific things um, to get there. You know, if you say to them, I need you to sell $5 more per guest, that's a lot more attainable to me than $40,000. I don't even know where to start. You know, we're going to pre-book more and we're going to do $5 per guest and you're going to get to that $120,000. Average ticket. So industry average, there is not an industry average, right? Your haircut's different than your haircut's different than your haircut. So what I encourage people on average ticket, number one is just know your average ticket your salon's average ticket is, and each individual should be proud of whatever their average ticket is. So my average ticket is $46.50. What's yours? Oh, I'm at 42. Oh, I'm at 61. Wow. You know, Each individual, if you walk up to them and you're running your salon like a professional business, I should be able to walk up to any stylist and say, what's your average ticket? And they'll tell you, right? It's, I, and I see it all the time in the best places. Now, I also see very often that you walk into a salon and you see what's your average ticket, and they'll give you a range, which means they don't know. You know, well, my haircut price is this, and my men's haircut price is that, and it's about $45, which means they really, you know, if I ran the report, it's probably not. So I, the most important thing for average ticket, there's not an industry average. Just know what yours is. And then as a goal, increase of 5 to $8 a ticket. So the industry average is, for you, your average is just whatever it is, and your goal should be 5 to $8 a ticket, okay? Um, and again, those are random numbers. If I'm a $40 haircut, $50 haircut, 5 to $8 um, is a range that just makes sense, right? If I'm doing uh, a $90 woman's haircuts and $45 men cuts, then, then maybe my goal is 10 to $15 an average uh, increase for my average ticket. But it really depends on what you're trying to grow that year, right? If you're trying to grow 15%, then I would try to increase my average ticket 15%. Okay? So I said I was going to talk about a tool called What If, and it's a little hard to see this. Um, but uh, What If is a program that um, I wrote 14 years ago. Um, and it's an amazing tool that allows you to have a great dialogue with your front desk. Now, if you're Millennium, you got this for free. Um, if you don't know, you lost it, you don't know where it is, call us, we'll, we'll get you on it again, let you download it. If you're here and you don't use Millennium or Mevo, we'll give you this for free. It's a great tool. So if, you, if I zoom in on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. We haven't updated it in about two years, I think. I think the last update was a couple years ago, right? Yeah, so we have it. The goal for me, honestly, is just find time because I want to rewrite it so that it's uh, more internet-based so you can just hit it on your phone, hit it on anything. So rather than continuing to add to that, we're, the goal is really to rewrite it. So, um, But anyway, uh, what it's showing you there is your average weekly service sales, average re weekly retail sales, percent service, new client retention rate, repeat client retention rate, average ticket, all the things we just talked about. And it's showing you that this person's doing $57,000 in uh, service and 4,000 roughly in retail. Okay? So then the next thing, so that's the left panel. So I just kind of zoomed in on that. If we go to the next slide, you'll see that that left panel is still there, but the right panel is the what if analysis, um, allows you to go in there and now change it. So that you can say, well, what if I went from um, uh, five visits a year, which is what this person's doing, to six? And that's the highlighted thing, it says six. I think I can zoom sometimes. Let me see if I can get the cursor over there. There we go. So we brought them from five visits to six. And, and guess what? It increased my service sales by 20% and my retail by 20%. By that one more visit, 
And, and that's a simple thing to explain to an employee. Again, four, one more visit, 25%. Five, one more visits, 20%. You want to increase your thing 20%? This is the easiest way to do it, and you do it pre-book. This is where I always start, whether it's with you, a manager, or the stylist, I start here. Because it's the easiest way, like I said, to be a hero. Okay? So we just saw how much that went. So they just went up to $11,500 to $69,000. And again, we're taking a, somebody only doing $59,000 in service, which is like a new employee type of thing. Now, if I go to the next thing, uh, the repeat client retention rate was only 60%. We're getting them up to 75%. So that added another eight, almost 9%. So now they're at 73,000 in service and 28% um, growth. Again, we're just going to fly through these so we can see the example. And so we brought them from $79.23, if we notice on the left-hand side here, uh, that uh, average service ticket. We're going to bring it up $5 to $84.23. $5, like I had said. Now they're up 36% on where they started. So they're up to 78,000 service and $8,200 in retail, which is 94% um, growth in retail. So and what I love about what if is, even if you think about how I'm explaining it to you, it's a very different conversation. Uh, hey, I want to go from 56,000 to $112,000 in, in sales, you know, because I want to make $60,000 a year. You know, I want to buy a house. I want to you know, new car, whatever that is. That discussion becomes much more easier when it's, you need $5 a guest and one more visit a guest and you're there. It almost seems too easy, but it's, 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 the, it's the facts. Yeah. In Millennium, so it's not within Millennium, it's a separate tool outside of Millennium that'll show under the Harm software, like if you go to programs, Harm software, it'll be there. Now if you don't see it, it means they didn't install it or they installed it on the server, in which case just call us and we'll get you get it installed for you. But it, what a great tool for dialogue with the employee because they understand dollars and when you show them what one more visit means in dollars to them, it's a great conversation. Yeah. So if they're currently doing, you know, in, in the 60,000, they want to make 60,000, you can plug in these numbers and then it will show them? Well, it won't show them. They'll still have to, let's just, let's just say they were at 40% um, commission. It's going to show them their revenue. So, you know, if you want to make 60000 you need to get to 140000 135000 in service sales. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. So this, right, but it's not going to show their commission. This is more the revenue side of it, but absolutely, that's the whole point. So, yeah, so now we're, we've already taken them from 56, I believe it was, roughly to 78000 And by the time we're done with this, you're going to see that it gets to 100000 They almost doubled what they did with small changes. And again, repeat client retention only going up 15% is very easy. It's just focusing in on it. You know, recognizing that somebody hasn't been in in 90 days and using the tools that are in the software or even the automation that I'm gonna show you that's in the software. Yeah. Uh, that's the growth, the dollar growth. That's the, so they went from, they went up 21,000 in services just by those couple changes, okay? And then, um, so now, uh, let's see, we did that one. And now, uh, okay, so the other thing that we're recognizing is that we're only giving this person 10 clients a month. So over on the left, you see 10, and where it's highlighted in blue, we're going to move that up to 20. Because we've talked to them about what they need to do, we're getting smarter about re rebooking those new clients, which also helps uh, new client retention. That's the other thing, the reason I love pre-book is when people get a culture pre-book, their new client retention also goes up. Because you're not giving that client the chance to leave and forget about you, they already have their next appointment book. So your new client retention rate will go up with pre-book. So to me, if you leave this class and just take one thing, Create a culture of pre-book. It's not saying pre-book. You're probably doing a little bit of that now. A culture of pre-book and pre-booking are two very different things. And when you see a salon that has a culture of pre-book, it'll blow your mind. It's like a well-oiled machine, and they're hitting 60 to 75% pre-book. All right? So, so we did that, and now they're up to 90,000. They've increased 56% um, in service. And then I believe this is the last one. Uh, the new client retention, we brought it from 35 to 50%. And let's see where we end up with all that. Let's zoom in. So they are now at 
They went from 57,000 in service and 4,000 in retail to 99,900, let's just call it 100,000 in service, 73% increase, and 10,000 in retail, which is 147% increase. And nothing I did is like huge, like, oh, it's because, you know, they did this thing that's, you can't pull that off in a slide. Everything I just did, one more visit, giving them more clients because new clients and, and making them understand the importance of um, pre-book and retention of those new clients and five dollars a guest those are the key things that we did and that's the difference this is this is math it's science it's real so uh, that's why i focus so, and that's why i want this class to start with the growth indicators because we're always just looking at well what's your revenue what's your revenue Revenue is the result of yesterday. These things by monitoring them and setting goals on them, and Millennium allows you to do that, Mevo allows you to do that. Most tools do not allow you to set goals on these growth indicators, um, both at the team level and at the individual level, Millennium allows it. How many of you, and this one, this one usually makes me sad. Jen, I have till when? 10.30, 10 good. Um, how many of you use the goal setting in Mevo or Millennium? See why it makes me sad? One, and he kind of went like this, which means kind of. <laughs> he doesn't have a culture around the goals yet, but he's set them. No, that's good, but it's not unusual. So what happens is you, you get a tool, right? Whether it's Millennium, Mevo, or whatever tool you're using, and you get going, and you get a little complacent. It's run in the front desk, you're ringing up sales, things are good. I can show you why you should be using goals in Millennium. So I'm gonna switch over to Millennium quick. Well, before we do that, this is the MA200 report. The MA200 report is under analytical reports, MA200. It's my favorite report in all millennium. It allows you on one sheet of paper to analyze the department, and on the next sheet of paper, analyze the individual. So you can sit there with the department sheet of paper that says, here's the average ticket, the client retention, the frequency of visit of the salon area of our business, and Susie, Susie's our front desk, Bill, uh, the stylist, uh, here is where you're at. And it's amazing. So imagine you've got what if to show them where they can go, and you've got uh, the ME200 to show them where they're at um, and where they're at compared to the department. And that's why I love this. So it's got all, it's got your hours work, your productivity, your, on the left quadrant here, you've got your service sales, your take home or retail sales, your percent of clients buying retail. And if you scroll down, this, this is, uh, bless you, this is, where I love, you know, one of the reasons I love this report, if you scroll down, number one, you get some eye candy graphs to show where they're going, where they're trending on service and retail, but above that, you've got your retention, frequency of visit, and pre-book. So retention, they're, um, they're at uh, 67%, a little, and this is real data, so this person's a little under the average, the average is 70%, they're at 67. New client service, new client retention's at 71%, which is really great. Um, the core clients, uh, there's a thing I, um, right here, that 957, it's something that um, we kind of created. It never existed before. Core clients is the difference between your retained repeat clients and your retained new clients. That's that little indicator that I told you about of whether you're trending up or down on how many clients you're gonna have, and it's projected out a year. So let me explain that. So the repeat client service is 1,110. The new client service is 298. The, new the repeat clients retained is 744, and the new clients retained is 213. What we do is we take the repeat retained 70, 744, we add it to the new retained 213, and we end up with 957. That's that core client number. A lot of people call in, what is core clients? It's just your repeat retained plus your new retained. And then what I do when I'm um, consulting with people is I check that number against the current repeat client number. So 1,110 are my current repeat guests. My core clients is 957. Am I trending up or trending down over the next year? There's 1,000 right now, and I'm going to end up at 957. I'm trending down. Now, the good news is I'm barely trending down. There's times where I, uh, I'll look at someone's data, and they might be at 1,110, and it'll say that the core clients is 700. 
meaning you're gonna lose 300 clients if everything stays the same and you don't fix something, meaning I'm probably losing more repeat guests than I'm bringing in of new guests. So we need to fix that. We need to figure out how to get new, more new guests in and more importantly, fix retention. Now we happen to see here that their retention rate is great. And then below that is average frequency of visits at 7.57, very good, right? So this is eye candy for an owner, right? This is every one sheet of paper, everything you need. Uh, well, there's one question here first. So our question was, when you run this report, it says, well, how many visits do you expect somebody to come in to be considered retained? And she said she plugs in six. Um, I plug in all different kinds of numbers. Now, I would not, six would be the, one of the last ones I do. Six is where you want them to be, and what's gonna happen is your retention numbers are gonna be super low. And, and it really doesn't mean your retention, it's kind of a little bit of a misnomer. Um, it's not that your retention is really low. What it's showing you is what percentage of the people are really coming in six times. I like to put in three. The reason I like three is uh, some people put four where at least every 90 days they're coming in for color or something. I like to err towards that, you know what, it might not be the frequency I want, but if they're coming in at least three times, I still consider them a repeat guest, just a guest that I need to work on the frequency. So I put three. Three is the one that I use as my base but then I will run the report for four, five, or six, because that's also, when I rerun the report at those numbers, I'm gonna get to see kind of what that other report was telling me. Remember, it goes out six visits. I can kind of go, okay, well, I'm at 67% on three visits, and then you change that to four, and that goes to 50%. Then I change it to five, it goes to 40%, and then I change it to six. How many of my guests, are actually repeat guests, are actually coming in six times, and all of a sudden that drops to 35%. So I like doing that, but if you use it as a base for dialogue with your employees, I'd do it at three, because you're showing them, hey, I'm erroring towards helping you here. I'm giving you the, you know, I'm, I, I want that number to be high. I want it to be at least at 67, 70%, um, but we're only basing it on three visits. So it's very attainable to hit 70%. If you do six, I guarantee yours is probably in the 40% range or 30% range, and you're really not measuring true retention. You're re you're measuring how, what your best, what percent of my clients are my best clients that come in six times a year. Sure. Okay. Love this report. Run it. How, now, again, be honest. How many of you have seen this report before? Okay. That makes me feel a little better. At least half of you. Okay. So that's good. This is, if you run one report for your dialogue with your staff, let it be this one. And MA. MA. So it's under analytical reports. So when you go into your reports, it's under analytical, and it's the MA200 right there. And the other one that I talked about, new client retention, is the MA210. I didn't have the number. It's two below that. New client retention by visit, the MA210. Run that one, and again, you'll smile. Not smile, you might frown, but then smile, because you, then you'll know, and I know, I know what I'm talking about, and I haven't seen your data, when you see 8 to 15% new client retention by the sixth visit. Okay. Got to keep going here. Um, so now let's talk about goals. So typically when a salon sets goals, it's on revenue. We're going to try to hit a million this year. We're going to try to hit 750,000. We're trying to hit 2 million. And again, that's good. And even my company, we set those goals, but it doesn't tell you how you're going to get there. And those growth indicators do. So I think it's important even at the salon level to set your revenue goal, but also to set the goal. What is our goal on pre-book percentage? What is our goal on new client retention? What is our goal on um, even gift card sales and things like that? So, so typically you'll set it on uh, service revenue, retail revenue, pre-book percentage, frequency of visit, average ticket, and client retention. If you set goals just on those six or seven things, that's all you need. And anything more than seven data points is usually too much, right? You can't focus on that many things. And as a matter of fact, when you leave here, what I would prefer is that you pick two of those things to really focus in on. So, and one of them should be pre-book. One of them should be frequency of visit, and the other one might be average ticket, it might be retention if you think you have a problem after you run reports, but, but start with just a couple, but um, Millennium's gonna allow you to, uh, and Meva will allow you to set uh, goals on all these things. Um, even set goals on inventory value. When you're in Millennium in the team goal screen, it actually lets you set a goal and actually see your past history of inventory value. There's so many salons I go into where you have $15,000 worth of inventory in stock, and that's just dead money, right? If you're not turning that every six to eight weeks, that's just money sitting there collecting dust. 
So you should have a goal or set a goal with your front desk to say, listen, we want to try to maintain, in a typical salon, it's eight to $10,000 of, of, of either back bar and or inventory. And so what's great about the goal screen is you can pop in there and see, oh, where were we at in December? Oh, wow, we hit 15,000, because it creeps up on you. That eight becomes 10, becomes 11, then 12, and then you have a, uh, a good month and maybe it drops ba back down to 11, and then you have a couple bad months of retail sales, and now it's at 15,000, and you're still ordering. And you don't even realize that you're putting more, what I call dead money, into that closet or back room. So knowing what your inventory value is, is important too. There's plenty of ways in Millennium to do that. I'll, I'll touch on a couple all together here. Gift card sales, setting goals for gift card revenue. What I love about gift cards um, is a couple different things. One is it's money that comes in today that guarantees me at some point, or at least 70% of those people are gonna come back to my salon. Um, the other thing is, is gift cards generate what? <coughs> Typically a person that buys a gift card is for who? Somebody else, an employee, a coworker, a friend. So now all of a sudden you're generating new clients with those gift cards too. Typically they're not buying them for themselves. Um, they might buy them for family members, but a lot of times they're buying it for somebody, a friend or somebody that, maybe not even that may not even come to the salon. So gift card uh, is a great way to do that. And Millennium, Evo, all, and even uh, competing products have really good um, gift card tracking and, and real simple ways to, to handle gift cards. Um, so even uh, online booking. Setting goals for, um, there's ways to even set goals on how many people we want to try to encourage to online book. Oh, we're only at 20 employees booking online. Oh, now we're at 50. Our goal is by the end of the year to get to 400 people booking online. You can actually set goals on these things as well. Um, so before we go into the individual, let me just pop into Millennium again. And I'm just going to go up here again. We've got to keep moving here. I want to make sure we get to cover everything. But I'm going to go under, just to show you how easy this is and hopefully make you feel terrible that you're not using it. <laughs> when you go to management team goals, um, this is super tiny. I don't know why, but I'll zoom in on it in a second. When I go to management team goals, let's stretch that out so we can see more months, okay? That's the whole year. Um, what I love about this screen, even if you've never set a goal, go into Millennium, go to team goals, go to last year. Now in this data, I think it, there's no data until you get to 2012. But, and then you click this button down here called Show Actuals. What's amazing about that is when you hit Show Actuals, now all these data elements that you could have been setting goals on that you didn't, it's gonna tell you what they are. To me, this is probably the coolest part of Millennium outside of report. You would have to probably write, run 10 or 12 reports to get what this is giving you in one screen. It's telling me by month what I did in retail, um, what I did in service, gift card packages, memberships, tanning, service per hour, service per hour per provider, percent services clients purchasing retail, retail, average ticket, all these things. If you don't know where you're at, go to Team Goals, Show Actuals, there it is. You don't have to go run 20 reports, here it is. And now, and this is where I said I'll hopefully make you feel bad. So, so we're going to come into, we're going to go to 2013 and I have no goals. This is what your screens are going to look like. <laughs> Zero. You told me you didn't do it. So watch why you should feel bad and why when you go back this week and you have Millennium, you go in and you set goals because it's even got the knowledge to do the seasonality for you. So I go in here and I change it to 2013. You'll be on 2015. I just don't have data past 2012. So I'm in 2013. There's no goal set. I go in there and I, t I click on um, edit because I want to edit my goals and I touch, for instance, service. And now I come down here to auto goals and I say, we're hoping to grow 15% this year. It will, by seasonality, set all your month goals for you. <coughs> and it's done. In 30 seconds, you can set your whole year retail service and look like a genius, like you sat there through the weekend and <laughs> Millennium did it for you. So that's why, you know, I encourage you guys to watch our webinars, go to the experience. There's so much in the tools. Again, even if you're not using Millennium, there's so much in your tools that you're not using. So make a commitment this year to kind of really go after that stuff. Like I said, whether you're big or not, um, you can dream big. And you can actually use the tools and look big. And, and, and what I love about this is that your time is valuable. You know, invest 30 seconds a minute, and you've got your retail and service goals. And it's smart enough because it's looking at last year. So it knows that December's more busy than June. So it's actually going to take that 15% goal you want and figure out each month how to do that. It's really cool. All right. 
How many of you feel bad that you've never done goals now? Yeah. All right, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. This, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of what Millennium is. This is the Paul Mitchell edition, but, um, you know, obviously we have several uh, versions of Millennium that are basically the same, just wrapped differently. But we're, we're really proud of what the product is. And, you know, even as we build Mevo, I go back to Millennium or Bob goes back to his salon on Millennium. And it's like this tool just does everything you need it to do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the, in the craziness of it, yep. so I think some things get too specific. When I see that, sometimes I think like the entering a certain thing does not need them. Right. So maybe just like do you offer like a screen for them or like what kind of terminology or like maybe? Yeah, so we do um, at, at the experience, we do um, front desk class called front desk professional. Um, it's usually one of the senior people, myself, Bob, teaching this class because we're just so passionate about the front desk. She asked about training for the front desk. We also have recorded webinars, so definitely reach out to tech support and find out how many webinar, webinar credits, did I, what did I say? That was funny. It wasn't webinar. It sounded funny. But how many webinar credit, credits you have, um, and you can, they can actually watch it in their convenience. So I've personally done, I believe they recorded the webinar of me doing front desk professional. Part of it is just one-on-one -on -one training too, which you can also uh, get. Uh, we, we sell training packages at very nominal fee where, where they connect to them over the screen. Uh, what, what do you guys use? Go to meeting or? Okay. So the webinars are, are free. So there's, a, there's hundreds of them up there. So uh, definitely there'll be something there. And then if you want the one-on-one, -on -one, they can connect and actually go through your data with them. And a lot of times it's just um, training them to, to pay attention to what's popping up. Or for instance, you know, you're looking at your retention rates and go, well, that doesn't seem right. Me knowing that by appointment type, I can say, well, don't count the wedding party because those people aren't gonna come back. So it's, you're always trying to set the system to encourage and favor the front desk or the stylist to get the highest rating they can because you don't want them to be able to go, well, well that's because of that 20 person wedding party we did on Saturday. And you're like, oh yeah, you know. So, all right, I'm going to keep going because they, uh, we're going to go a little over the 1030 because we started late and we were going to give you an extra break there. So we'll just shorten that a little bit, but um, I want to make sure that I get to cover everything. It's important to me. So now I'm not going to go into this uh, millennium to show individual um, goal setting. All right. So even the individual screen in the, uh, in millennium allows you to do the same thing we did for the team. You go in there and you go to bill and you go to service and you go auto goal, boom, there's his goal for this year, 15% growth, all done for you. So even individually, you can set these goals very quickly. Now you do that under data, employee info, and there's a tab that says goals, okay? But why are setting individual goals important? I mean, it's pretty obvious, but when I first started the company, Bob was my first sale employee and I never set goals for him. And he used to come in and actually just ask me, he's like, you know, how am I doing? I'm like, oh, you're doing great. And finally he came in after a few months, he's like, every time I come in, you say I'm doing great, but you know, great two months ago was eight sales. And then I hit 20 sales last month and I'm still great. Like, what's the goal? You know, he goes, set goals for me, even if it's each month. And it made me realize like, it, they want goals and it totally changed the game. Um, once I set those goals to see how they're doing. Now we're doing some really cool stuff in Mevo too, where it becomes more interactive. Um, I'll show a couple screens on that, but uh, where it actually goes to their cell phone and actually on their smartphone will come up and actually show a trophy if they hit a goal. So some really fun things that I think are gonna really change the industry and the way that you set goals. But setting goals are important and, and again, not just revenue goals. It's the goals around the growth indicators. Um, at a minimum, what do you think we should set? How uh, so goals at a minimum? Annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. What's the minimum? Like if you don't have time to set everything, what do you think would be the right minimum goals to set? No, but I'm saying frequency, you know, once a year, quarterly, monthly, quarterly, month. My feeling is month. Quarterly, if you're not doing it, quarterly is still great. Millennium's gonna help you track it. So if you, are you using Millennium? 
Yeah, so then I would do monthly because it's going to track it monthly for you. But if you're not using Millennium and you're not using goals yet, quarterly is still fine. At a minimum, it should be, in my opinion, especially if you're using a tool that tracks it that way, monthly. Now, the ultimate goal and where we're going with Mevo and where you should even translate your monthly goals down to is what? The ultimate goal would be day. I've seen some of the best salons know exactly what they need to do that day coming into it. And then there's a report in Millennium called Estimated Sales. Okay, there's a report in Millennium called Estimated Sales Under Appointment Reports. And it'll estimate based on the appointment book how much you're going to do that week, that day. So you actually come in and know, oh, we're at, we're at $1,200. Our goal is $2,200. So we have $1,000 we need to make up. And they know that coming into it. So, um, so knowing daily, even at the individual level, is the ultimate thing that you would try to do. So even if you knew that they needed to do $10,000 that month, you translate that to $2,500 a week, and if it's five days a week, at least $500 each day in sales, because that gives me something that I can do today. So if I look and see it, I'm at $350, I know I'm $150 short. So how can we um, um, fill that book in? And if you have a front desk professional that knows what they're doing, or even a stylist that might have a gap in their time, there are so many tools in Millennium where you can set a text message, an email, or just pick up the phone and fill up their book. So if they saw from one till three, they're empty. What I love to see is a front desk that's churning, not just waiting for that next person to come up and get rung up, or the phone to ring. They're picking up the phone and going, okay, running a report in Millennium called the um, client recall listing. Client recall listing says, tell me anybody doing for services today or this week that don't have an appointment book. Gives you the playlist with the phone number, start going down the list and fill your day. Appointment recall report, I see you guys going nuts on that one. It's called the appointment recall report and it's under, um, what report category? Let's see. Now, let me show you something. See this button here called IntelliText? If you hit that, I don't remember all the reports. All I know is the word recalls in it. So you go to this text area, and I'm just going to type recall, right? There's the reports. So the AQ070 appointment recall listing. Oh, I clicked that little button right up here. It looks like a text box with an arrow right here. It's called IntelliText. It allows you just to type what you're looking for, and it finds it. Because I can never remember where the reports are either. So if you remember the MA200, you remember it had the word retention in it. You remember it had the word recall in it. You just type that text and it'll help you find reports. There's 400 plus reports in Millennium. Use that. Use that. John, yes. Um, for the recall, so you have to have already set up like single processes and then other systems, correct? Very good point. So what she's saying is in the service screen, when you set up a service, one of the things it says is how often does this service need to get uh, done. So say for a men's haircut, you put four weeks. For a woman's haircut, you might put four to six weeks, whatever. For a single process color, it might be eight weeks or whatever it is. Um, she's correct. So for the recall report to work, you need to go through your services and make sure that you've got frequencies in there that make the most sense. And then the recall report will work. It, what it'll do is it'll say, okay, um, and you can even with the recall report that's great is you can actually decide what service category to focus on. Maybe you look and see that the nail departments really needs uh, uh, to fill up. So you, you select nails as the category. Now it's going to try to fill up, uh, bring back people that are doing for nails, right? Or color. You know, what I tell people, um, and I've seen um, some of the top salons do, is they'll start with color. That's the easiest thing to get people in. Uh, they're already, they call it chemically addicted or whatever to you. And also it's a high dollar service. So what they'll do is they'll select color as a category, blue in this week, boom, there's a list of 60 people. Start calling them, start calling them. There's a column there that says future appointment. So you look for the ones that are blank, it means they have no appointment on the book. If they do have an appointment on the book, it'll show you the, the date, the future date, and you can check whether it's that color or not. Oh, actually, if it was the color, it wouldn't have shown up, okay? Recall report, I call it the front desk playlist. You, you run that and it's like amazing. Phone number, everything, start calling people and you just watch the book fill up. I went to a salon in Morristown, New Jersey a couple months ago. He's a guy that wanted to raise prices and increase marketing. I left there, he didn't raise prices, he didn't increase marketing, he started pre-booking and he ran the recall report. When I showed him this report, he's like, you've got to be kidding me. He's been using my software for 18 years. 
He's like, you have got to be kidding me. And there's the list. So he started doing that. Actually, um, his wife started making the phone calls as we continued to um, um, do our consultation, whatever. And he, the following day, I think he was only like 40% booked. By the time I left, he was already booking two days out. So it's, it's a great, great feature. All right. So individual goal setting told you that you can do it in Millennium. Super easy. And you do it around these growth indicators too. What's your goal on pre-book? What's your goal on frequency of visit? What's your goal on average ticket? Not just revenue. Okay. Um, I did throw a picture in there of what we did in Mevo uh, just to show you that we're really trying to be cutting edge and we're continuing to try to evolve ourselves. And this is one of the screens where it actually has for the break room, uh, they're called leaderboards. So they actually see where they rank on average ticket, where they rank on pre-book, right? So you could have it showing in the break room or and when, when they hit their goals, it actually goes to their Android phone, their iPhone, and shows them the badge they just got because they hit the retail goal for the month. So we're doing some very exciting things um, in Mevo. And again, part of this uh, day, this morning that we're spending with you, you're going to learn from me. You're going to hear from some real world stuff from Matt Beck. And then we've got a uh, system set up. So afterwards, if you've got time and you're not starving, or that we have some snacks, you can go back there and say, hey, show me a little Mevo. Or I have this question on uh, Millennium. Or show me that recall report John was talking about. So definitely encourage you to do that. So I just gave you the, one of the best strategies for filling your book up every day, and that's the recall report. It's also just human intuition of looking at the appointment book and having a front desk that uses their head and looks and says, wow, for whatever reason, Bill is really not busy at all this afternoon. I'm going to now run the recall report for only Bill's clients and start to fill up his book. And, and that relationship, there's a lot of times, what the relationship between stylists and the front desk, a lot of times, unless they're buddies, is like this, right? They screw up their appointments. You know, and there's a, there's a love-hate there for sure, and there's definitely trust issues. But when that front desk starts to fill up Bill's afternoon and do these things that are more proactive, uh, definitely heals that relationship a, a lot. And because they're pre-booking and things, there's not as many phone calls coming into the front desk. So when I pre-book, then I'm also not answering as many phone calls so that I can do some more of these proactive things. I actually tell salons, if you don't have a front desk professional and all the stylists, and I don't care whether you're four chair salon or two chair salon, if you don't have a front desk at all, um, I strongly encourage you to do it, but only once you understand the tool and how you can use it. Because if you bring somebody in for, let's even say $10 an hour, in eight hours you're paying them $80. If they do just a couple things that I've showed you, they're gonna make you $80 an hour, right? They're gonna make, book six or seven people for $50 services and bring in $350, let's say, in one day, um, uh, so that they're, as long as you don't have them just there, and it's also for customer service, it's just much easier for the ring out process and taking an appointment. So, um, so if you don't have full-time front desk professionals, I would encourage it, but again, only after you really understand how they can use the tool and you set them up for success on how to really help the salon. And they will, they're a money profit center, not an expense when you do it right. So I always push that. Client loyalty, how many of you use client loyalty in Millennium? Cool. Oh, that's good, a few of you. So the great thing about the client loyalty is you can set up a points ratio. I like to use 1,000 points equal a dollar. You can do whatever you want. The reason I do 1,000 points equal a dollar, if they have 22,000 points, they have $22. Real simple to figure out. Bob wanted to do 100 points equal a dollar. I said, go ahead and do it. But again, then once you get to a certain number, it's really kind of hard to back into the math exactly how many points that is and how many dollars it is. I like 1,000 points equal a dollar, and to me it, sound, it sounds better. You can determine who can get points. You can actually go into the, you know, when you created a, a, an employee profile, it also creates a client profile, right? So if John's one of your employees and you create that employee profile, it creates a John client, right? So that you can ring me up for services and it knows that I'm an employee and automatically applies employee discounts. Well, guess what? I'm gonna turn off gets points or allow points on John the client because you're really an employee. A funny story about that, Matt Scudder works for me for over probably 12, 13, 14 years, and he goes to Bob's salon. And Bob finds out that Matt's redeemed, so Bob gives him half price on everything. But then he finds out Matt's showing up and using points. So he's like, Scudder, really? Really? He's like, you're going, getting the free haircuts and stuff after I give you 50% off? And so Bob hadn't turned off the, the fact that Matt could accumulate points. So if you are using the point system, make sure you go into the, your clients that are employees and turn off at the top of the screen it says allow points turn it off 
it makes no sense to give employees points if you give them a discount. Okay. Uh, and you can also determine which services it applies to. So you have a lot of control over the point system. So I encourage you to check it out. Um, there are, I call these the no-brainer points options. Points for pre-booking a new client. I like giving a lot of points on that one because I'm encouraging that guest to come back. And if you pre-book, I'm going to give you enough points that when you come back, you might be able to buy a free bottle of shampoo. But the real great thing about the point system is it's transaction-based, meaning if they pre-book but they cancel their appointment, they don't get any points. They actually have to get rung up for that service to generate the points. So again, I'm always trying to think of why an owner or why a stylist or why anybody would not want to use this. What are the scary things that could happen? So I, I, my job is to try to figure out some of those things. I give like 10,000 points for a new, a new client that pre-books so they have enough points loaded into the system on their second visit so they could get a shampoo or at least feel like, wow, I, I'm, I'm loyal now because I've got 10,000 points already. I like giving points for pre-booking on existing clients, and that's only about 1,000 points. If you do 1,000 points equal a dollar, I'm willing to kick them a dollar discount for leaving with their next appointment. And again, they only get that dollar if that pre-booked appointment is rung up. If they cancel it, they don't get it, right? And then the third one is for referring another client, 15,000 points. I mean, I want to encourage people to bring other people into the salon, and it's worth $15 for a new client to come in, because it's really not $15, is it? If they bought product with that, it's really $7.50, because you're paying $7.50 and selling it for $15. So it's really only costing you half of those points. So I like front-loading it. For th the whole idea, the worst point systems out there in my mind are ones that just get points for every dollar spent. Now, in Millennium, you can do that, and I even say go ahead and do that, but give such a small amount, it doesn't really change things much. The real things you want to do are influence behaviors that they weren't doing before the point system. So I want to encourage pre-booking. I want to encourage new referrals. I want to encourage trying a new service. Those are the things that I give uh, large point amounts for. So what are concerns about, I'm going to go five more minutes, Jen. Is that all right? Um, what, are, what are employee concerns? It's really about the employees going, wait a minute. If you're going to let them pay for things in points, you're not going to pay me. That's the number one concern about the point system on the employee side. So the ne next question is, what's the biggest concern for an owner? Giving away services. For, wait, so they accumulate these points, and then they come in and get a haircut, and they get it for free, or they get it for 50% off? So what I explain people, so those are the two things. The employee worrying about not getting paid, um, and the owner going, I'm going to give away the shop, right? So the right thing to do is to really analyze this point system and make sure that you're doing it right. If you do it right, you can't go wrong, especially with the way we did it in Millennium, because we're doing it in a way around these growth indicators. We're increasing the average ticket, or they're not getting points. We're, they're buying retail, or they're not getting points. They're pre-booking, or they're not getting points. They're, they're referring clients. They're doing these things that help you grow. So let's just say that you gave me 15,000 points for a new client referral and it's a $45 haircut. I give you three new clients within a year and I finally accumulate that 45,000 points and that next service is free for me. Are you okay with that? You've got three new guests, hopefully coming in five times a year. Those three guests times five is 15 visits. Let's just say that it's a $40 ticket. I just brought in $600 every year, year over year to your business and you're giving me a free haircut. That free haircut is costing you uh, 45, let's say that it, uh, $20 to the stylist. $20 for three new guests. So to me, if you set it up right and you see somebody redeeming and getting something for free, in your mind you should be like, awesome, this thing's working. Because they gave me something far more valuable than, than the points or the, the free haircut they're getting. The other thing I encourage for the people with the point system, allow them to redeem the points for whole units of something. You don't want them coming in going, oh, you know, I'm going to put the tip on my points. Oh, I'm coming in, I'm going to buy this $12 shampoo. I have $3.50 in points, so redeem those, you know, 350 points or 3,500 points towards the shampoo. It's a nightmare. You don't want to deal with it. So what I tell people is in your point system, just put in there, must be redeemed towards whole units of service or retail. Now, I actually go into this and say, okay, um, you want to increase uh, influence client behaviors. That's what we talked about. Um, so should it be redeemable for services only, retail only, gift card? 
What I tell people, it's up to you. Um, I honestly, if the system's working, I don't care what they redeem it for. If they want to come in and say, I've got $50 worth of points, I want a $50 gift card. Hello, I'm happy because you're going to give that $50 gift card to somebody that doesn't come here. I don't have a problem giving points, let them use points for retail. They want to use it for service. Now, there are some people, points are only redeemable towards retail because they're trying to, you know, that year they're trying to build retail sales, you know, get people trying the retail. I'm fine with that. But there are some people who are like, well, I don't want to let them buy gift cards with it, and I don't want them to buy package series, and I don't want them to use it for this. And in my head, I'm like, well, then you don't trust your own point system yet. Because if you really set it up right, you don't care what they're using it for. You want them, you want the system to work. And for the system to work, they need to redeem. They want, you want them getting, taking that 45,000 45, points down to zero again and starting over and trying to get more referrals. And so I encourage you to allow those points to be used on anything other than a tip. But I would allow it to be used for anything, um, but in whole units. $50 gift card, a haircut, a bottle of shampoo, but no nickel and diming. All right. And the most important thing about a loyalty system, the best one, there's a whole culture built around it. So I, um, let me just use an example. I went to this um, um, place yesterday with the owner, Hector, of here, and it's a beer garden place, or built World of Beers or something like that. So we went to watch the game, and they had the most amazing loyalty system. Their whole chalkboards had a list of who had 2,000 points and their, the person's name. Hector, he had to try like three different beers. He wouldn't let me pay for his beer because he wanted to be able to get his points. I'm like, you're kidding me. So I, I, I still bought his beers, but I had to give him cash because he wanted to use his card so that he got the points. So the system's working. But it's really amazing. It showed up on uh, his phone, showed he had 314 loyalty points. He's gained 13 badges. This is some of the stuff we're doing in Mevo now, where he can kind of see that he tried a German beer, then he tried a whatever beer. The whole, you couldn't talk to an employee there that didn't understand this system inside and out. You look everywhere, and it's about the system. You go online, it's about the membership. You go, and it's a whole culture. Where point systems fail is when you create this point system, nobody understands, not even the client. You don't advertise it or you have a little card at the front desk. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it is if you're going to embrace this and you're really trying to increase visits and you're trying to do the things we're talking about, your website should talk about it. The stylist should be able to talk off the top of their head about the importance of the point system and, you know, well, what can I redeem it towards and how do these points work? And they should be able to answer it. And they should love it and encourage using it because they, don't, they see that it helps their business. Now, what else makes a point system fail? And this freaks people out. I don't agree with paying an employee less for points. And there are some people that do it, and Millennium allows you to do it. I don't like it. I put it there because there's people that are smarter and override me. I'm the developer. And I said, okay, I understand. We'll, we'll, we'll create it so you can pay them maybe half of what they would have gotten on commission. But am I gonna be pushing that point system when I know I'm gonna make less? No. If I set up the system right and they're, and they're getting a $45 haircut free as an owner, do I care that I still have to pay John $20? No, because I understand what 45,000 points brings my business. So um, for it to work, it's got to be a culture, website, front desk understands it, employees understand it, everybody's loving it, and, they, and, uh, and, and we're happy when we see clients using it because it means the system's working. Okay. They're going to pull a plug on me in a second. Marketing. All I really want to talk about in marketing is a lot of people don't realize in Millennium, we have the ability baked in um, using constant contact um, to actually um, create your own strategy. So you should do some minimal ones like birthday, automatically go out each month. You can set up um, miss you 90 days. Somebody hasn't been there in 90 days, automatically send an email. So these things that you think that you have to use outside companies for or a marketing company, are built into Millennium. It's under marketing, email campaigns. Just go in there and it lets you set up your own client selection. You know, birthday this month or hasn't been in in 90 days or has purchased retail, you want to do a promotion. So I want to send it to people that buy retail and have been in in the last 90 days. All these things you can do in Millennium. Um, it's right there, it's easy to do. We have Millennium Mail, it's called, that it automatically sends the mail out if you do it that way or you can use constant contact. Another thing that you can do I like to do, if you just pick a few, you, you send out the birthday ones, you send out the miss you because they haven't been in in 90 days. I like sending out a new client welcome. 
I like sending out a new client welcome, no future appointment. Write that one down. New client welcome, no future appointment. Client walked out the door, I want to welcome them, but I want to recognize that they didn't book an appointment. There's just a checkbox in the client selection screen that says no future appointment. Then what it'll do is segment, okay, out of 100 guests, there's 40 that walked out without an appointment. And then at the bottom of that email, I'm going to welcome them and I'm going to say, and we did notice you haven't booked your next appointment. Click here to visit our online booking site 24 hours a day. Right? So you get your online booking going that, Millennium, that you have in Millennium and you put a link to it. So now I'm, John, who has an appointment, is going to get, hey, welcome to Elysium Salon. Jen, who has an appointment, um, uh, I'm sorry, came in as a new guest, but doesn't have an appointment, is going to get, welcome to Elysium Salon. We notice you haven't booked your next appointment. We'd love to uh, take care of your next service. Click here anytime, 24 hours a day, to book your next appointment. So those types of things. Simple. You set it up, it takes a few minutes, and you forget about it. It schedules itself. It does it. Now, the other thing that you can do um, is use um, Demand Force <clears throat> is another partner that we have that's from Intuit, and they actually handle all this for you. They kind of just, you, you go through a little setup with them. Um, it's, you know, depending on the size of your salon, it's anywhere from $250 to $400 a month, but then they give you a report showing all the revenue that they help generate and all the things that happen. Um, and a lot of times you're seeing, yeah, I paid $250 or $300, but it brought in $2,500 in revenue. So it's like, okay, I'm okay with that. So those are some options that you have through us. So quickly, online booking, if you're not doing it, any more clients expect it. If you don't, haven't turned on online booking in Millennium or Mevo, do it. Clients are expecting that to work. 70% of your bookings will come from a smartphone. And we have a smartphone version of our online booking that has a whole other feel that's really easy, one finger way to, to book appointments. Millennium e-gift, something we launched a year ago. Put a little link on your website. You can sell gift cards 24 hours a day, and it actually goes right into Millennium. You show up the next day, and it shows you there's six gift cards sold. So um, um, very reasonable. I, I, again, you can talk to the salespeople. I don't know exactly. Um, uh, there's something called web openings you guys should check out that we also offer through a third party. And it'll actually show up in your Facebook and other things of last minute openings. So that's another way you can encourage people uh, in the afternoon to go in there and find openings and select those appointments. Um, also, Demand Force will actually do some automation that way too. How many of you use Millennium Go yet? You know what it costs? It's an iPad uh, tool for Millennium. It's free. You guys should check it out. Now, we uh, just came out with a new release. It's coming out in two weeks. That uh, It's rock solid, and you can see your appointment book. You can rebook appointments. You can look up client formulas. You can look up client history on an iPad. Free. Can we all afford free? Yes, me too. I love free. And the next guy coming up, free saloneducation.com. How much does that cost? Free. Perfect. Perfect guess. Is that iPad only or is it Android? It is iPad only? Yeah, iPad only. Uh, the new stuff that we're doing with Mevo is both because we realize that people want both, but this one we built specifically for iPad. Um, okay, so that, we want you to look into that. One other thing I'm going to talk about remote business. So many people are like, well, you know what? You know, I, I know Mevo's not ready for us yet, but we want cloud. You know, um, this whole cloud thing has really been overdone. You, what you want is the stuff I talked about before that's going to grow your business. Cloud is fun, and yeah, you can do certain things on your phone and on an iPad, but it's not necessarily going to grow your business. I'm not saying it's not important, but you know, it's not going to take you from here to there. Um, but for the people that really want to access stuff 24 hours a day at home on an iPad, on an Android, on um, whatever you want, uh, remote business is part of Millennium. And a lot of people either didn't set it up or don't even realize they have it. It'll give you access to your appointment book 24-7, your goals, your reports on an iPad. I know, everybody's like, what? See marketing? Marketing. Uh, I was teasing Jen. I'm like, you know, you can't tell all the stuff that Millennium can do in the cloud or on an iPad. So we actually, I'm teasing them because they actually just added a bunch of stuff to our website so people understand that. But we need to do a better job communicating to you guys. So that's been something we're pushing a lot, making people realize, do you know that you have remote business? And so many people don't, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, call tech support, talk to these guys, and say that you want to get up on remote business. And then you can actually, by login, it'll honor the security you put in Millennium. So if I put in there that 
Susie can log in but only see her column. Um, she logs in from home but only sees her column. Right? As a manager, I can go in and actually edit schedules on an iPad from home. So I want to see you guys, you know, you're a part of the family or you're our clients. I want to see you using all the stuff that we built over the last 15 years into Millennium. And of course, Mevo is our new thing, and I just, you know, everybody's hearing about it. We're excited about it. It's eye candy, it's sexy, that's the appointment book. It has something called a combo bar where you can actually type haircut with John or Jen tomorrow or Thursday. And the appointment book just morphs to those columns, and it's, it's pretty sick, this stuff we're doing. When you log into Mevo, you determine all the KPIs and all the key metrics that matter to you, and based on who logs in, it shows up. If I'm front desk, I see how many appointments are booked today. Uh, what the revenue is today. If I'm a manager, I see gift card sales, I see retention, I see the things that matter to me. So all these dashboards, you set up what matters to you. Here they're showing up pre-book percentages at 65%. Um, and what I wanted in Mevo is you're not going to a report. Mevo's built around the growth indicator. So when you, by virtue of using Mevo, it's showing you the, the exact metrics. Uh, success center, this whole thing about setting goals and getting this whole gamification of goals and making it fun. Um, this shows some of the charms and gamification. They can send each other caring coworker badges. The you know, whole staff will start to interact around goals and things that matter. And, um, and it works on mobile devices too. So, so that's it. I mean, uh, those some of the charms. These are all handmade by our graphics department, graphics designers, just making it fun. Little charms, you can say, hey, thanks for sweeping up my station and gift each other things. Uh, it's a lot of fun. But, that's my time. I went a little over, but we started a little late. We're going to only take about a five or 10 minute break, and then Matt Beck's going to come up and really talk about how to do some of this real world stuff in the salon, which I think you're going to love. Grab some coffee, grab something to drink. Bathrooms are around the corner, and we'll get going again. But thank you.